Hi everyone, my name is Lucian. Most of you know me from Twitter as Triangle Investor. In today's edition of CEO and Market Expert Interviews, I'm joined by Andrew Ferrier, a Managing Director of Okapi Resources. Okapi is a operation, uh, operating in two segments, uranium development and uranium enrichment technology. Andrew, thank you very much for coming to my show. It's great to have you. Yeah, and thank you for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to come on and speak about Okapi and the uranium markets in general. Excellent. Uh, Andrew, let's start uh, with your background. How did you end up in Uranium and when and how did you join Okapi Resources? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Um, my background is in is a chemical engineer, as a, as a metallurgist. Um, and I was a metallurgist for a period of time. And then I, I worked in private equity for around 12 years in mining private equity. And one of those key investments we made in that space was in a, a uranium asset called the Reno Creek asset in Wyoming, which is an ISR project. So I came to know the uranium industry quite well during that period. We held that asset from 2012 to 2018. Um, we eventually sold that asset to, to UEC. Um, that's an important part of their sort of hub and spoke strategy in Wyoming as it is. So we took an asset and we, we basically um, did a reasonably substantial upsizing of the resource and we took it all the way through permitting as well. So got to learn the, the permitting process in the US well, got to, to know the companies and all the other assets, uranium assets in the US well, and obviously generally enjoyed that industry, even though it was through pretty bleak time, sort of post Fukushima through to 2018. Uh, but in those hard times, you, you learn a lot of lessons and you get to meet a lot of people. Um, and you know, I had the opportunity to join a copy of resources about 18 months ago. I jumped at the opportunity. They already had some very interesting assets under management. We've also grown that pretty dramatically over the last 18 months, and we're going to continue to do so. We have a pretty clear strategy of we want to build assets, particularly in the US. We'll go on to exactly what the assets are in, in a copy shortly. But um, yeah. yeah, I'm very happy to be in the uranium space at the moment. Excellent. As I mentioned, your company has two segments. Uh, let's start with the enrichment. Uh, uranium enrichment is a six billion market. Uh, I mean, enormous market. And you have your horse for race here. Uh, please, can you give us an overview of the, your technology? Yeah. So, yeah, we're also incredibly excited to be in the enrichment space. It makes Okapi, you know, truly unique relative to nearly all our uranium peers yeah. outside of Silex on the ASX, as far as I'm aware. Um, and and we invested in the enrichment space earlier this year. How we did it was we invested into a company based in Australia called Uberian, which is a private company, um, and they have a uranium enrichment technology here in Australia. We're now there largest shareholder i've joined the board it's absolutely fascinating space at the moment in terms of it's a rapidly evolving mm -hmm. just from a geopolitical point of view exactly what's happening in terms of uranium enrichment around the world and uberian is um uh, has a as a chemical enrichment technology and it's in the process of developing and commercializing that as we speak excellent uh, can you please uh, expand a little bit on the objectives? Uh, what kind of hurdles can be expected and some possible timelines specifically for each of your enrichment program and uh, commercialization? Yeah, so the company has um, very clear high value milestones that it's achieving, aiming to achieve for the next 12 months. That was sort of 12 to 18 months um, since we invested and they're progressing well towards those milestones. Mm -hmm. um, so most of those milestones are in relation to ongoing test work, which is being completed by the company. So the company, in terms of the stage of development, is, is continuing to tick boxes as it moves through that development curve. Um, and it continues to, to work through those sort of markers. Um, and we keep a very close eye on that. And we're obviously very, very encouraged by the results today. Um, and when the company sort of hits certain milestones in the future, We'll also be be pretty excited about that, um, and we think it will sort of paint Newberian in, in a very interesting light to, in terms of the rest of the market as well. Uh, what are the advantages of uh, Uberian uh, over Silex or Centrus? Uh, can you expand a little bit on that? Yeah, the, the Uberian technology is different in, in sort of 
the, the main difference is that it's a, as I mentioned before, it's a, it's a chemical enrichment technology where we think of Silex as, as a laser technology and, you know, the incumbent technology, which nearly all enrichment takes place today is through center view shoots. So they're all different processes and I'm sure they all have uh, different pros and cons. What's so exciting about enrichment technology and what Uberian is working on is it has a few inherent characteristics which make it very interesting. One is it sort of you can completely bypass the conversion process. So you think of a nuclear fuel supply chain, there's obviously mining, you know, conversion, enrichment as the key three first steps in that process. Um, and because the feed material in chemical enrichment doesn't need to be UF6, which is the gaseous products producing conversion, that just makes that whole step in the process redundant. Um, and as most of you know, your followers would be aware, the enrichment market is incredibly tight at the moment, but so is the conversion market. So if you can remove that step from the process, you're obviously removing, you know, one, a cost, which is obviously pretty important, but two also whole bunch of supply logistics as well to make it make it easier um so there's there's that step which is is pretty pretty important um and then there's a whole other in terms of chemical enrichment in terms of scaling up um and commercializing the technology there's sort of a, a good argument can be made that that can be done um mm -hmm. relatively in a simpler quicker fashion quicker fashion um because of because of the the process which is used mm -hmm. Uh, is this uh, technology approved uh, or what stage is uh, this in? Yeah, so the technology is based here in Australia and the company um, has a permit to, to do test work here in Australia. Um, as most people know, um, Australia currently has effectively a ban on, yeah. on, <laughs> on nuclear. So yeah, as a, as a very general phrase, um, so it, it it has a permit to do what it needs to do for a period of time, and that is continually walk down those steps. It has it it's, um, it works very closely with its regulators, which is extremely important. They're obviously very important parties for Uberian moving forward, and they we like to think that the company has a good working relationship with those regulators. So it, it's in a it's a good place where it turns if it can do the test work that it. it is keen to do moving forward. And that's the key thing for the company. Yeah. Uh, where do you see, let's say, uh, that part of the company enrichment, let's say five years from now, do you think that the majority of rev your revenues will come from that part or from maybe develop development of uh, some uranium projects and going to production? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Um, our investment in Uberian as, as a technology, we didn't really invest in it because we thought it was going to be a generator of ongoing revenue. We see it very much as a, a key investment for our shareholders, our Carthy shareholders. And we have some very key objectives that we, we're hoping the company can achieve. And we think that, you know, once those and if those objectives are met, then there's other natural owners of this technology in the market. Um, and Akavi is a, you know, a, a good shareholder for Uberian at this point in time. But given the nature of the enrichment market, um, you know, we hope to see it sort of move on and blossom and, and create value for Akavi shareholders in that process. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk uh, your other company segment that that is development and exploration of your uranium projects and you have also one gold project uh i would like if we can cover them all and we will do that by starting with your flagship project and that is uh, Talasi uranium project uh can you give us an overview of this project current status and plans for going forward yeah absolutely yeah Tallahassee is a is an amazing pro amazing project it's based it's in colorado in the u.s um, we have a, a dual compliant resource here, close to 50 million pounds already. So if you compare that to other companies in the market of similar sizes, remembering, you know, we're going to talk about enrichment, we're going to talk about the US assets, we're going to talk about the Athabasca. And even with all three of those assets, we have a market cap today of $25 million. But, you know, Tallahassee, 50 million pounds in the ground. The entire Tallahassee district is closer to, to 90 million pounds. Um, and it, it's had a huge amount of work done on the past, like 
uh, and we're blessed with nearly all that data today. So this, the sunk cost has gone into this project. It's huge. Cyprus spent a huge amount of money on the project in the late 1970s. They got a full-blown mine permit to mine Hanson, which is the sort of key deposit within the Tallahassee district, um, to mine Hanson as an open pit and underground operation. Um, so this is a well-known project in the US for a long period of time. We're very excited to have, have it in the, as our flagship asset in Okapi. We think it's of huge value to have US assets at the moment. And we can sort of touch on the thematics on why we think that's so, so important. So the key, well, what we've done over the last 12 to 18 months of Tallahassee is a series of two transactions to bring those 50 million pounds together. We've then gone in and locked in land access agreements with all the landowners in the district. And we've got a road access agreement with the co-op in that area as well. Uh, we're then gone and we're in the process of, of getting permits with both the state of Colorado and also the county, which is Fremont County, Fremont County in Colorado. We're in the middle of that process right as we speak. Um, things are moving along quite smoothly um, and we have some key meetings coming up in the next weeks to months on that front and where we envisage and we hope to have that permit in hand by the end of the year. Why that's so important is that means early next year, sort of, think Q1, Q2 next year, they'll allow us to get on the ground, do some, you know, very um, targeted drilling on Tallahassee. If you saw a map of Tallahassee and you saw all the drilling that was already done on the properties, you'd understand why there's no more need for sort of yeah. step-out drilling or even infill drilling. So what we're really focused on is sort of what we generally just call is sort of geotech or metallurgical drilling just to just to fill in a few of the gaps of the data from the previous work done. And once we have that all in hand, we can pull that together into a technical study to get out to the market. And we think that will show, the, you know, the true colours of Tallahassee in terms of the, the, the size of the beast and sort of a, a bit of a timeline on how quickly we can develop that asset. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me more about the accessibility and infrastructure there? Yeah, so the infrastructure is good. Um, the Tallahassee projects is uh, 30 k's away from Canyon City. Canyon City is a pretty substantial city, obviously in Colorado, which is about 150 kilometers south of Denver. So, um, you know, obviously you know, you've got very clear access to, to labor, most importantly, um, and then in terms of, um, other inf key infrastructure things in terms of power and water, that's all, all relatively easy. So that's one of the things being in the US that you're blessed with is, is obviously very good road access power. Um, in terms of water sources, that will be something that we'll, we'll look to lock in um, in 2024 and onwards. Um, so we're blessed. Tallahassee is in, in a very good location. Uh, just another question regarding that project, and that is in ideal circumstances, uh, when do you think that that project could go into production? I know it's early maybe to speak about that, but do you have any possible timeframes, so to say? Yeah, I think we'll have a lot better sort of clarity on that next year once we've sort of done the key technical work we want to do and we'll put that out in a technical report. But I think in if you're speaking ranges, which is probably appropriate at this stage, I think given where this project is, we're obviously blessed with a huge amount of data, which will help accelerate the development of the asset. But there is a permitting process to go through. Um, so we, we would say from the point right now, we're still probably three to five years away from having an operating mine outside there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense uh, by looking from here. Um, Let's move to the Tabasco Basin projects. Uh, can you give us an overview of those projects? How many projects, how many land, et cetera? Give us some overview of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Athabasca is sort of it's, it's a really impressive asset. We picked up these projects um, a little over 12 months ago, six projects, close to 60,000 hectares across those six projects. Um, we've been working... Um, very closely on what we call our Newnham and Perch projects, which are up in the, the northeast of the, of the Athabasca Basin. Um, we just completed um, a pretty extensive airborne program over that, that over those two projects in the last couple of months, which we got out to the market. And that was on the back of, um, you know, getting an exploration permit, doing a whole bunch of on the grounds, 
geochem work, structure work back in October, November last year. And the reason we're so focused on Noonan and Perch is when we originally picked up our pretty extensive package of assets, we sort of took a, a very clear step back and, and did a, a reasonably detailed prioritisation, you know, assortment or, or selection. And Noonan and Perch just continued to tick all the boxes. Um, and that's where we've been mainly focused. We do have some other interesting assets, particularly our middle lake asset, which we also have an exploration permit on that's very close to the old Clough Lake mine, which produced close to 50 to 60 million pounds of uranium over an extensive period of time. But Noonan and Perch is, is where we're focused on. We've sort of done all the steps in the process. We've been quite methodical about how we think about target selection. And what we like about it is it's on the fringe of the basin. So the targets we're looking at are sort of 50 to 150 metres deep, which are relatively shallow targets. When you think about other people's exploration sort of models or targets that they're going for at the moment. And that's really important for a junior where the Athabasca is a relatively expensive place to drill. And if yeah. we can hit drill targets within the first 50 to 150 metres, it just gives us more of an opportunity to hit the you know, hit the mother load because it is elephant country and that's that's what you're looking for. You're looking for something very substantial there. And we're, and we're quite excited about what the airborne work has turned up, particularly at Newnham. Um, and the next step in that process is to go out and drill those targets. Uh, do you have timeline of that drilling campaign possible? Yeah. So there's obviously North American winter coming upon us pretty quickly. Um, and that's certainly an opportunity for us um it's it's helicopter um helicopter supported drill program either winter or summer um there's effectively no road access out to, to the Newton property at this point in time uh, but we've done a lot of work we worked very closely with um some pretty impressive consultants in the basin as well over the last 12 to 18 months has helped set up that program so we'll we'll either think um of joining those projects either this winter or, or next north american summer Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's move a little bit to the south, to your US uh, Rattler Uranium project. Uh, what can you tell me about this project? Same questions. Same question, uh, what are the plans, overview, and please expand on this one. Yeah, so Rattler is a, is a pretty interesting um, claim to be picked up effectively in the La Salle district in Utah. Um, and we have, we've gone through the process, we obviously have a, a permit to drill on our, on our Rattler claim as well. Um, and these are basically on the, the western fringe of energy fuels LaSalle package. Um, so it's a very interesting space and it's obviously relatively close to the, the White Mesa Mill as well, which is a key piece of infrastructure in, in, in that part of the world. Um, so we've, we've got... Um, We've got plans, obviously, think about, one, how do we expand our footprint in that part of the world? And we spent a lot of time thinking about that. We, we sort of grown to, to like that part of the world more and its potential um, and what it could mean when you think about uranium price. So obviously, touch 70 recently, but when it gets to 80 to $90 a pound and there's a, there's a scramble for key uranium assets, how can we sort of front run that process and pick up some, some interesting assets? So that's what we've been been focused on, but there's also the opportunity to drill on that Rutler claim as well, which is thinking about the, you know, how to how to how to expand first. So we have a real footprint first before we before we go ahead and spend money. Because we obviously have competing sources of money. Tallahassee is obviously our flagship asset and drilling in the Athabasca is a high priority as well. But are you in contact with uh, your neighbors there, like Energy Fuels and other companies? Do you have some sort of cooperation with them or just good neighbor relations? Yeah, we, 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 there's no formal agreements in place on, or anything like that. I don't want um, to, that's not the case. Uh, but okay. we do have obviously good conversations about um, their objectives and how potentially our company can grow in that part of the world. And there's obviously, uh, it's not just energy fuels, there's a few other neighbours in the district as well. And there's a few, you know, obviously ASX companies around there as well. So uh, it's moving, it's a pretty, pretty fluid space at the moment. And we're seeing, obviously, seeing some corporate transactions announced recently. And I think you'll continue to see a lot of asset transactions as well as people try to, 
continue to, you know, there's a renewed focus on uranium in particular, and people are looking to, to grow their pounds under management as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, what about the Maybell uranium projects? Yeah, Maybell's one we've done a, a lot of work on. Um, it's, it's a very interesting, I, I didn't actually know a huge amount about uh, Maybell before joining Okapi, but Maybell's had over 5 million pounds of uranium produced on it. Um, it looks like, you know, heat bleach process, so it looks like, you know, recoveries are very good. So the metallurgy seems very simple as well. And we've basically gone in and staked nearly that entire Maybell package, which we're, we're pretty impressed that we've been able to do that. Um, we, and we're continuing to actually pick up pieces as we go through the process. Um, so we just, and we've done a whole bunch of work in terms of we've acquired some data, some old historic data, which was vitally important and actually had some very interesting drill data on it as well to actually understand because there's two different horizons there. The upper horizon was largely mined out, not all of it, but largely mined out. But there's a very substantial low horizon, which has actually a huge amount of, you know, obviously historic pounds at this at this point in time. And the data we've picked up over the last six months has helped us really understand, I guess, what the potential of that project could be. So we continue to be really proactive in in and continue to advance it. Um, and that's definitely a project we'll look to be proactive on in terms of having drill rigs turning in 2024. Okay. Uh, same question like before, accessibility infrastructure of this project. Yeah, it's it's reasonably good as well. This is obviously, this is in, this also, Maybell's also in Colorado, but it's, it's not near Tallahassee. It's actually in the Northwestern mm -hmm. part, Colorado. Um, and it's, it's actually got pretty good infrastructure. It's not too far um, from a main road. It's actually not too far from the city of Maybell as well. Um, and it's got a pretty extensive oil and gas industry in that part, northwestern part of Colorado. Um, so there's sort of no known problems at the moment in terms of being able to get those key infrastructure, you know, requirements in place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move to your gold project uh, and more it's in new south wales uh, please give us an overview of this project plans for this project yeah and more is a project um we actually don't <laughs> speak so much about them at the moment but it's a very interesting project and before before i joined um okapi did drill out the project and and got some very sorry about this no problem got some very interesting uh results on it we followed that up with a a drill program, um, which was roughly completed this time last year. We also had some very interesting uh, drill intercepts on that project as well. Unfortunately, at the time, gold equities were just <laughs> in the pits, to say the least. Um, so there wasn't a huge amount of interest in the projects, but I think we're being pretty pretty open to the market in terms of we're a uranium company. We're already very much got a hands full in terms of our US, Canadian and enrichment property um, you know, assets and properties. So the more project is something you sort of will look to um, potentially sell or farm out or something along those lines. Um, and we're sort of working through that with a few select parties at the moment. Yeah, you answered my next question. And that is, is there an option to spin out this uh, asset? And uh, so good, good answer. Uh, I mean, you have a lot of valuable assets, but do you have a clear plan for the future, what will be your focus? Will you stick yeah. to uranium development and spin out maybe enrichment part? What's the plan? You know, the, the plan is obviously 100% focused on uranium assets in terms of, you know, exploration and development and our investment in Uberia, which is our uranium enrichment. So the plan is to continue to grow, to keep input power under management. Um, you know, we've got a... Uh, an objective, we want to get to 100 million pounds and we'll we constantly look at different assets and projects and assess, um, you know, are there, are there any accretive transactions out there for us to grow? And we, we look at a lot of things. Um, not everything gets across the line, but we're, we're very proactive in just getting bigger. And it's fundamentally because we think uranium market is going to continue to strengthen over the coming weeks to months. So we just want to position our shareholders to benefit from that. Um, as much as possible. So the, the plan is to grow in the US, continue to, to develop our Tallahassee project, and that's what we've been doing for the last 12 months. And then the Athabasca, the, the plan there is to, 
to test those drill targets to see if we can create real value off the back of off back of drilling in in the basin. Um, and we're seeing you know a few pretty impressive examples of of companies who have tagged into something. It's it's elephant country. You can you can find really massive deposits at very impressive rates. And we think our Noonan property has a lot of the the traits or the characteristics you'd like to see, which those other the discoveries had. There's obviously no certainties, but um, yeah, they're, they're very interesting assets. And in terms of Uberian, um, we're going to obviously want to continue to grow into that story. Um, well, we think the market's coming to them in terms of what everything that's happening in the enrichment landscape at the moment. So that will be an important part of the Carpi valuation moving forward. Um, and we think it's, it's, it's going to get a lot bigger um, and be a huge part of our valuation as well. Okay. Uh, let's touch a bit on your cash position. Uh, what's your cash balance at the moment? And how do you manage that cash across multiple projects? Yeah, so our, our cash position at the moment would be close to $1.5 million. Um, and in terms of how we manage it, we obviously have a, a nimble team. Um, I'm EMD. We have a, a very small workforce in the US who are focused on, on Tallahassee, Maybell and Rutler, as we discussed. Um, and we, we just manage costs as tight as humanly possible. And we're very focused on making sure um, money goes into the ground. Right. That's that's where we can actually create value is by continuing to advance and develop our assets. And we sort of um, are at a place now where um, those assets can be progressed um, over the next six months um, uh, based on the work that we're doing at the moment. And obviously we've got bolder and bigger plans in the future um, to continue to, to drill on those on those projects. But we're we're well satisfied at this point in time. Uh, do you see difficulties in uh, raising money? I mean, you are a junior company, and uh, when we look at the silver and uh, other commodities, gold, copper, the juniors have a lot of hard time getting the money. Do you see that uh, in the same way for uranium juniors, or it, it is a, a little bit easier than, let's say, in precious metal for for precious metal junior? Yeah, no, it ha hasn't been my experience in terms of raising money that's always been um, well supported from existing shareholders and new shareholders coming on board I think obviously there's a, a you know people want um, to minimize solution every time you're raising money so sort of um, you need to just think through the the pros and cons of how much you're raising at each each point in time and what milestones and catalysts you're achieving with that money. Um, but we're, we're blessed to have a very supportive shareholder base who are sort of in the story for the right reasons and believe that uranium is going to be one of the best performing commodities over the next 12 months. So, yeah, I, I've, I've, I guess, been blessed a, a little bit in that sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, you touched on share, shareholder base. Uh, do you know how many, let's say, your shares have a retail part? How many of uh, shares are, hold, are held by insiders or maybe strategics and uh, bigger companies? Can you expand a little bit on that, uh, on, the, on the share structure, so to say? Yeah, and I, it's a it's a good question, and it's it's changed a lot over the last twelve to eighteen months as well. So, um, I think when I joined the Carp, it would have been um, nearly nearly one hundred percent retail based. And obviously, as we've gone out and marketed the story and grown the story, um, some institutions have been um, attracted to the story and come on board at certain points of time. That being said, I still think we're a retail based register. I know our, our shareholding numbers have sort of really taken off over the last, well, even last month, you could say, but have sort of, you know, substantially doubled probably over the last six to eight months. So our register is growing pretty rapidly as well. Uh, in terms of insider holding, um, it's about 6%, which is a pretty substantial number. And I think that's um, it's good for people to see that in terms of skin in the game. And certainly all the shares that I have are shares that I've, acquired myself with my own money so i think that's even you know more skin in the game i dare say so um there's some some good signs for shareholders we're all very incentivized to make this a, a very big success for our shareholders 
Uh, who are the people behind your company? Uh, sort of in what sense, in terms of the board? Or... I mean, the board, ma the management. Who are the people behind the company? Who is your Who is in your team? Yeah. So obviously, I'm the MD. I'm based in here in Sydney, Australia. Um, the chairman is Fabrizio Pirelli. He's also based here in Sydney. We work out of the same offices. Um, he's got a very uh, extensive and successful background in, in property management, but as is is very tuned to sort of commercial negotiations and, and deal doing for lack of a better phrase it's pretty pretty knowledgeable about the mining space as well um our other independent director is based in perth he's a geologist he knows the tallahassee project extremely well he worked on it previously so we're we're a three-man board as i said that sort of just says we're efficient decision making nimble um, we're all very invested and, and paying attention to the day-to-day -day operations of a copy. So there's a three-man board. We also have a, a, a part-time CFO and corporate secretary based in Perth. And outside of that, we have um, we have one full-time consultant in the US. Um, and that that's effectively the team. Okay. Uh, final question, Andrew. Uh, possible news flow. When, from which project, when can we expect uh, news flow, let's say, in the next six months? Oh, next six months. Oh, um, a lot. So in terms of Tallahassee, there'll also be updates on the, the permitting front, uh, I think, which is a, um, a reasonable milestone for us that we've been working on. Um, and then obviously the work we're um, planning on doing on the ground come 2024. Um, on Maybell, we continue to work on that project in the background. Um, we look, look to get bigger there um, and increase our position and then just try and give a really clear understanding to the market of the potential of that asset as best we can with the data we currently have and just getting and sourcing more of that data and then obviously going out and drilling that that asset ourselves. Um, in the basin, we discuss obviously the potential to drill those projects uh, certainly over the next six months. Um, and then on top of all that, there's sort of, you know the business develop side of things in terms of um, what what how we grow the business and and how that evolves over the next six months. So I think you know if you look back at what Akapi was six to twelve months ago, I think you can see the same change moving forward in terms of Akapi continuing to get bigger and bigger. Yeah, uh, Andrea, wish you luck with all your projects uh, and thank you very much. Uh, for coming to my show it's it's been a great chat thank you very much i i really appreciate the opportunity and uh, hopefully we can do many more definitely we will thank you very much